So if you can do all the previous steps comfortably, you're pretty freaking advanced. If someone comes to me and they can do all this stuff, uh, I'm going to tell them, yeah, you're you're already pretty good at soloing. So now we just kind of need to refine your stuff up a little bit more. So advanced actions. Number one, building speed on the ultimate rhythm exercise. So ultimate rhythm exercise before you should have a goal tempo of about 80 beats per minute. But for me personally, I've practiced it all the way up to like 150 beats per minute. And it gets really, really hard and really, really challenging, both mentally and physically with the picking technique and, and so on and so forth. Now, number two, diatonic seventh chords. Okay, so all this stuff is mainly based on triads that we've done so far. But you should also be able to have seventh chords under your belt. So if I do this, for example, I'm going to play C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G7, A minor 7, and then B half diminished 7, and then back to C major 7. So be able to do that in all keys, all inversions. And when you have 7th chords, you actually have another inversion called 3rd inversion when you have the 7th on the bottom. So this would be like a 3rd inversion. 7th root, 3rd, 5th. And it sounds really cool when you start arpeggiating all of those different inversions and you can start to uh, increase your just again, more melodic possibilities and harmonic possibilities by adding that one extra note to each of those chords. Uh, number three, you should be getting your ears really, really well. So, uh, or really, really good. So your ear is going to be the most important thing. I know people always talk about, oh, playing by ear, playing by ear, playing by ear. That is true. You should know how to play by ear, but you should also know all this stuff too. So I have a video where I show you this thing called the master interval drill. That to me is a great place to start getting your ears to be absolutely rock solid. If you can execute that master interval drill, that's going to put you in a really, really good position. So now number four, once your ears are starting to get pretty good, that's going to help you a lot to execute number four, which is transcribing solos by ear to add vocabulary. So, yeah, once you know all these fundamentals, it's super cool because then when you transcribe a solo from David Gilmore or if you're into jazz, you transcribe a solo from Wes Montgomery or Jim Hall or Pat Metheny or from uh, anybody else, Jimi Hendrix, any of your favorite guitar players that inspire you, now all of a sudden you know how to take a look at that stuff and say, hey, wow, uh, that's this triad, or that's in this key, or I can see it's part of this scale. You start to actually recognize the different building blocks that these people are using so that you can start to incorporate them into your own playing. So incorporating your own playing in number five. So Number five is creating your own variations of licks from solos you've transcribed and then improvising with them over the progressions that you know and have familiarized yourself with. So I have another video, how to, the best way to practice licks or something like that. Uh, watch that video to dig deeper into exactly what I'm talking about, how you should be practicing your licks. Basically, the nuts and bolts of it is that you shouldn't just repeat your licks over and over and then just hope that they're going to come in your playing. For example, if I have a lick like... That's a lick that I learned from someone. Well, I want to be able to create different variations of it. I might go... And, and then lick differently or play different rhythms. Or take little fragments of it. So in other words, not just learning licks, but taking those licks and actually making your own stuff out of them. Okay, number six, 
practicing different intervallic patterns with your scales. So playing them in thirds, fourths, fifths, being able to execute different intervals with the scales that you know. So for example, if I wanna practice the C major scale, by the way, if you wanna learn more about this, check out my video called 10 Essential Improvisation Patterns for Guitar. So for example, this would be playing the scale like in fifths. So doing these kinds of things really helps to start to break you out of your old ideas that you might have been having. And also, um, it still helps me to this day to, to practice that kind of thing. Uh, it just gets me playing in a manner that's not stepwise. People often have a, tons and tons of stepwise stuff in their playing, uh, and that can make it feel a little bit stale uh, if you're not careful. And then finally, guys, the last thing is just taking all the stuff that you know and learning as many songs as possible and soloing over their chord progressions using all of the previous tools. So you got all this stuff under your belt. You just got to start using it. OK, learning lots of songs. That's really what took my playing over the top is once I had this stuff down pretty well is OK. Now I had to learn a new song, a new song, a new song. You do that freaking dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times and practice all these progressions that are in different keys. And you see different uh, types of chord movement and all this kind of stuff, especially practicing jazz, <laughs> which I studied for a long time. You learn all kinds of different chord progressions which really, really will just broaden your horizons and teach you how to execute and apply further. We've been applying all this stuff, but apply further all the things that we've gone through in this action list. So if you want to learn all the fundamentals I talked about in this video, including all of the pentatonics, the major scale, the minor scale, all the things that you need to know in all keys, make sure you head on over to jamsville.com right now and pick up the Jamsville GPS fretboard fundamentals course, which has hours and hours of lessons going over absolutely step-by-step -step every single last detail of all the stuff that you have to know that I was just describing here so that you can practice it and master it on your own. Also, make sure you drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos every single week. All right, everybody, until next time, listen, learn, and jam.